The prologue to the movie begins with a gruesome scene in the middle of nowhere. We see a desperate man trying to flee from his cold-blooded masked attacker. His body is bleeding profusely due to the multiple gunshots that struck him. The attacker comes closer and fires another shot with his sniper rifle that makes the bleeding man fall to the ground. The man tries to get a hold of the gun, but instead the attacker takes out his machete and slices the victim's arm. Then he shoots him once again, making sure that the man is deceased, then ties him up with his motorbike and drags him away. The scene shifts to a beautiful woman named Allison, also called Ali by her boyfriend Chris. She is in a wedding shop, trying out dresses for her wedding. The shopkeeper guides her through a series of beautiful dresses, and she finally chooses a delicate and stunning white gown. The lady commends her choice, saying that the dress was custom made for a previous bride, but it has not been worn yet, as the bride drowned in her bathtub just a day before her wedding. Such distressing news about her wedding dress's previous owner disturbs poor Ali, but after getting approval from her friend, she decides to wear it nonetheless. Her fiancé Chris is a famous YouTube prankster. Ali is the star of Chris's popular YouTube channel, centered around jump scare pranks. The mischievous shopkeeper joins forces with Chris to execute a prank. As Ali approaches the mirror to admire herself, Chris leaps out wearing a mask, sending her into a state of fright. Amidst laughter, Chris reveals the camera, and together they greet their online audience with a spirited, hi. This prank is just one of the many Chris has planned for his 10 million followers, setting the tone for the thrilling and unpredictable journey that lies ahead. In the following scene, Allie and Chris find themselves in the gynecologist's office, eagerly discussing their aspirations to start a family. The doctor, understanding the importance of Allie's well-being, emphasizes the need for self-care and stress reduction. As their appointment concludes, fate brings them face to face with Jesse, an old friend of Chris's. Jesse extends a spontaneous invitation for the couple to visit a church he owns. Allie, craving a break from the monotony of Chris's YouTube pranks, immediately embraces the opportunity and agrees to Jesse's proposition. A spark of anticipation ignites within her, signaling a potential new adventure on the horizon. Back at their home, Allie begins packing for their upcoming trip. Allie, mindful of the doctor's advice, initiates a conversation about her need for a stress-free environment. She openly expresses her concerns to Chris, requesting that he refrain from pranking her as it tends to elevate her blood pressure and cause moments of stress. However, Chris, not quite ready to see eye-to-eye -eye with Allie, instead turns to his viewers for input, seeking their opinion on the matter. With that said, he finally joins Allie in packing their belongings, preparing for their journey ahead. The next morning, they drive off towards their friend's abode. By the evening, Allie and Chris arrive at the countryside church, the picturesque setting unfolding before them during their drive. As they make their way, Allie broaches the subject of her aversion to being pranked once more. Emotions bubbling to the surface, she expresses her frustration and implores Chris to promise that he will refrain from pranking her, at least for the duration of their weekend getaway. Sensing the sincerity in Allie's plea, Chris assents, agreeing to honor her request as they turn towards the magnificent church. The grandeur of the building becomes apparent as they approach. Constructed from weathered bricks, it exudes a certain beauty and charm. They are warmly welcomed by David, the resident of the church, who informs them about Jesse's delayed flight, but assures them that they will be well taken care of during their stay. Allie and Chris present David with a bouquet of flowers, which he graciously accepts and places in a vase filled with water. They engage in friendly conversation, getting to know David better, while he offers them to make themselves at home. Curiosity piqued, the couple eagerly looks around, taking in the sights and surroundings. However, as they explore their surroundings, an eerie and unsettling atmosphere begins to permeate the air. They come across disturbing sculptures that send shivers down their spines, severed heads, gruesome displays of brutality, and bloodstains that appear disturbingly real. The authenticity of these macabre elements raises concern within Allie, prompting her to question Chris about the unsettling nature of the church. Chris, attempting to assuage her unease, explains that his friend Jesse is an artist who creates sculptures and paints them. He attributes the disturbing visuals to Jesse's artistic expression. David shows them the huge yard before the church and asks what they see. Chris laughs and comments about the trees and beautiful greenery, but what David tells them next makes their blood run cold. Turns out, the huge ground that they are overlooking is a graveyard, with the tombstones all removed. Allie's sense of unease keeps growing by the minute, leaving her horrified and unnerved by the creepiness that surrounds them. Following the unsettling tour, David kindly asks about dinner and leads the couple to their spacious room. The walls are adorned with a captivating shade of red, and a queen-sized bed invites them to rest. However, the room harbors an unexpected feature, an open vent that connects it to the ground floor. Unknown to the couple, David discreetly eavesdrops on their conversation as they settle in. Allie, overcome with a growing sense of unease, expresses her deep discomfort with the eerie ambience of the place. She pleads with Chris to consider leaving, believing that the atmosphere is too unsettling to endure. Chris, on the other hand, brushes off her concerns and denies her request, assuring her that everything will be fine. Sensing her vulnerability, Allie makes Chris promise that he will refrain from pranking her further during their stay. Their brief conversation is interrupted by David's call to join him for dinner, diverting their attention from their concerns momentarily. He tells them about the vent, and also informs them to cover it, so that they may have their privacy intact. The couple descends the stairs and takes their seats at the dining table, 
where David, still immersed in conversation on his phone, receives a call from Jesse. David shares the news of the flight delay with Chris and Allie, apologizing for the unforeseen circumstances. As dinner is served, a delectable spread of mussels fills the table. However, Chris, being allergic to shellfish, opts to enjoy a plate of fries instead. Amidst the meal, David expresses his genuine admiration for the couple, revealing himself as a devoted fan. This revelation sparks an engaging conversation, with David sharing his enthusiasm for their YouTube channel and discussing their memorable pranks. The evening unfolds with a pleasant exchange of stories and laughter, fostering a sense of camaraderie between the couple and their eccentric host. In the subsequent scene, the atmosphere shifts to a lively after-dinner party. David takes charge of mixing drinks for himself, Allie, and Chris adding an element of fun and relaxation to the evening. As the drinks flow and inhibitions loosen, they engage in a spirited karaoke game, cherishing the joyous moments they share together. Laughter fills the room as they sing their hearts out, creating memories that will, without a doubt, be etched in their minds. As the night progresses, David unveils a potent concoction, a drink with a potent kick that promises to elevate their spirits even further. With a mix of curiosity and excitement, they each take a shot, feeling the effects of the powerful elixir wash over them. Their laughter intensifies and they capture the euphoric moments with David's Polaroid camera, snapping selfies and joyfully pinning the prints on the wall. However, the strength of the drink eventually catches up with an exhausted David, leaving him sprawled out on the couch, unconscious and peacefully asleep. Allie and Chris are left to bask in the euphoria of the evening, cherishing the intoxicating bliss and the special connection they've formed. In a highly intoxicated state, Allie stumbles out of the living room into the dimly lit hallway. Her senses dulled by the potent drink, she catches a glimpse of a shadowy figure hiding behind a nearby table. Fueled by her intoxicated state, she calls out, mistaking the figure for Chris. Her focus fixated on the mysterious presence, a mixture of curiosity and fear swirls within her. Just as Allie's voice echoes through the hallway, Chris emerges from another room, unaware of what has caught her attention. Startled by his sudden appearance, poor Allie lets out another scared cry, convinced that it's another one of Chris's pranks. Chris, perplexed, reassures her that he had been elsewhere the whole time, not involved in any tricks. As the haze of the potent powder begins to settle, they both realize that the intensity of their intoxication may have been distorting their thinking. The combination of the strong substance and the dimly lit surroundings may have created illusions and heightened their senses. Coming to a mutual understanding, they attribute their experiences to the potent effects of the drink, since they were drinking quite a lot for almost the entire evening. The atmosphere slowly changes to romantic, and the two attempt to reconnect and find solace in each other's presence. Allie and Chris embrace in the living room, their intimacy doubled with the powerful cocktails and overwhelmed. The couple make out, and then they decide to move to the bedroom for another intimate moment, seeking refuge and comfort in each other's arms. Unbeknownst to them, as their passion consumes the bedroom, the once sleeping David has disappeared from the living room couch. An unknown figure lurks in the shadows, creepily observing the intimate encounter, their motives and identity shrouded in mystery. A little later, still in the middle of the night, we see Allie waking up. She gets out of bed, takes her robe, and heads towards the bathroom. Aiming for a bath, she methodically turns on the showers, fills up the bathtub and comfortably settles in. As she is sitting there, the door creaks open and another alley walks in with the same robe and a similar intent. In a horrifying twist, the alley in the bathtub undergoes a grotesque transformation, her once familiar features contorting into a nightmarish creature, with melted skin and blood staining its form. The two versions of alley lock eyes, their screams blending in a discordant symphony of terror. In a panic, the real alley flees from the bathroom, her heart racing as she searches for Chris. She frantically scans the room only to find the bed empty, devoid of any trace of him. Desperation fills her voice as she calls out his name, but there is no response, no sign of his presence. With a mix of fear and frustration, Allie rushes back to the now deserted bathroom, her anger boiling over. She reaches for the tap, expecting it to be another one of Chris's ill-conceived pranks. But to her astonishment, the faucet is wet, dispelling any notion of trickery. Allie's fury turns into fear as she grapples with the surreal events unfolding around her. Confusion and fear intertwine, leaving her questioning the boundaries between reality and nightmare. Poor Allie, who came here to escape the stress of her fiancé's pranks, seems to be more stressed than ever. She comes out of the toilet and heads downstairs, searching for Chris. But all she finds is that same creature from the bathtub, there in the living room now. The creature, along with Allie, starts screaming very loud. Poor Allie is then grabbed and lifted in the air, and is drawn towards the creature, which leads her into the basement of the church. As the first rays of dawn pierce through the windows, Chris awakens, his eyes scanning the room in search of Allie. His heart skips a beat as he realizes she is not by his side. An uneasiness settles in urging him to action. Hastily, he drapes the sheet around his body, shielding himself from the cold, and hurries down to find his missing girlfriend. With each step, Chris's breath fogs in the frigid air, and he calls out Allie's name, his voice filled with worry and urgency. The empty halls of the church echo his desperate pleas. The poor man is on the brink of a serious breakdown. Even David cannot be found anywhere. He scans through every room, seeking any sign of Allie or their host. The chilling silence exacerbates his growing unease. Finally, as he reaches the ground floor, Chris catches a glimpse of Allie through a window. 
His heart lurches at the sight of her standing outside, unclothed, exposed to the biting cold and the blanket of snow. Ignoring the cold that seeps into his own bones, he rushes to her side, wrapping her in his arms, seeking to shield her from the harsh colds. With Allie in his embrace, Chris carries her back into the shelter of the church, her body stiff and her teeth chattering from the extreme cold. They both come to the realization that there is no power running through the church, leaving them devoid of any internal heating. Shivering uncontrollably, they understand the urgency of finding a solution. Determined, Chris goes out to locate the main power source, descending into the depths of the building. He navigates the dimly lit corridors, searching for the control panel that could restore warmth to the church and make the poor couple less miserable. Fingers trembling with cold, he flips switches and presses buttons, but his efforts prove futile. The realization sets in that the power is completely out, leaving them with no other choice but to escape the chilling confines of the church. Meanwhile, Allie seeks solace in the bathroom, her body still trembling from the cold. She waits anxiously for Chris to return, her breath visible in the frosty air. When he rejoins her, his face etched with concern, he delivers the news of the power failure and the impending necessity of leaving. With a sense of urgency, Allie and Chris hastily dress themselves, their minds racing to find a way out of the chilling church. As they gather their belongings, ready to make their escape, their attention is drawn to the flowers they brought with them. To their bewilderment, the once vibrant blooms now hang limp and withered, as if they have been left untouched for days. A strange unease settles upon them, deepening their confusion. Weren't they there just yesterday? Frantically, they begin their search for their phones, their lifelines to the outside world. Their hands rummage through bags and pockets, only to find them empty. Panic takes hold as they realize their electronic devices are nowhere to be found. A sinking feeling washes over them, intensifying their sense of disorientation and isolation. Imagine being stranded in an almost desolate place with no heat or electricity, and even your phone stolen. It must have been very scary for the pitiful couple. In a desperate attempt to gain some semblance of understanding, they scour the premises for any form of technology that might provide them with the date. Every electronic device seems to have vanished, leaving them cut off from the outside world. Chris's eyes fall upon a radio, a glimmer of hope sparking within him. He retrieves it, hoping to find some answers, but soon realizes it lacks the necessary batteries to function. Chris, still not losing hope, searches around the building for any hidden supplies that could power the radio. With determination, he locates a stash of batteries hidden in the ceiling, inside a rechargeable light source. He inserts the batteries into the radio, and to their relief, it crackles to life, emitting faint signals of static and distant voices. As they listen intently, Allie's panic resurfaces, urging Chris to abandon their search for their missing phones and leave the eerie confines of the church. But Chris is determined to uncover the truth. The crackling radio voices offer glimpses of a world they have been disconnected from, but no concrete answers. Their confusion mounts as they piece together the fragments of information, slowly realizing that they have been trapped within the church for an inexplicable four days. The couple are horrified. Amidst the turmoil of their realization, they continue their desperate search for their phones, retracing their steps through the labyrinthine corridors. Frustration and apprehension intertwine as they come to terms with the eerie nature of their predicament, each passing moment heightening their urgency to escape the mysterious clutches of the church for fear some unknown terror might befall them. Allie comes to the first floor, in the bedroom. Amidst her search, she looks at the wall painting, and to her surprise, there is a camera hidden in it. She calls out for Chris, thinking that it must be him again. He comforts and confirms to her that he is just as unaware about everything as she is. Chris comes down to the ground floor, yelling loudly at David, thinking that it must be him. Then we see multiple multiple cameras installed throughout the place, and we get to know that the couple is being recorded. As Allie's screams pierce the air, Chris's heart pounds with fear and concern. He races up the stairs, desperately searching for his girlfriend, ready to face whatever horrors away. Bursting into the room, he finds Allie trembling, her eyes locked on the grotesque, melted creature before her that Chris is unable to see. Without hesitation, Chris grabs Allie's hand, pulling her away from the horrifying seizure. With a newfound determination, he agrees to leave the church, abandoning their mobile phones because their safety is of higher priority than finding the phones. The couple emerge from the church, stepping onto the desolate road, their footsteps echoing in the silence. The weight of their situation hangs heavy upon them as they navigate the eerie emptiness. Chris's mind races, filled with concern for Allie's well-being and the realization that he left their essential medicines behind. He turns to Allie, urging her to stay outside while he ventures back to retrieve their much-needed supplies. His words are laced with worry, and he promises to be quick, emphasizing the importance of her safety. As they continue their journey, unaware of the lurking danger, the man from the opening scene remains hidden in the shadows. The cold glint of a sniper rifle reflects in their eyes as he observes the couple's movement. With a sinister intent, he prepares to take a shot at Allie, but something gives the person a pause. The figure hesitates, his finger hovering over the trigger and ultimately decides against taking the shot as the couple turn back towards the church. Unbeknownst to Allie and Chris, they narrowly escape a potentially deadly encounter, their lives unknowingly spared by the fleeting indecision of their unseen observer. The threat remains, concealed within the shadows, watching their every move. The couple's return to the church sets the stage for a new chapter in their unsettling journey, 
leaving them to confront the mysteries and dangers that lie within its walls once more. Back in the church, Allie is waiting outside, while Chris gets in the church at a slow pace. A few minutes later, Allie gets attacked by the same creature who drags her down to the basement of the church. Allie screams, hoping Chris will hear and come out faster. Chris follows her screams all the way to the basement. The door is locked when he gets there, but the screaming continues. He breaks the door and gets inside. There, he finds Allie, standing next to a video system, full of curiosity mixed with dread. Chris approaches the monitors and begins sifting through the recorded footage. With each video, their shock deepens. Their most intimate moments, captured without their knowledge or consent, are now exposed on the dark web, unleashed upon an audience hungry for twisted entertainment. The realization dawns upon them that they have unwittingly become pawns in a sadistic game, orchestrated by a prankster far more dangerous and depraved than Chris could have ever imagined. Their privacy violated, their vulnerabilities exploited, they find themselves at the mercy of an unknown tormentor. As the gravity of the situation sinks in, anger and a desperate need for answers surge within them. Their focus shifts from the immediate fear to a determination to unmask their tormentor and put an end to this twisted game. As Chris goes through the videos, Allie finds Jesse in the back of the basement. She calls out for Chris. The room fills with terror as Allie and Chris confront Jesse, their hopes momentarily high by the sight of him alive. However, their relief is short-lived as a masked figure enters the basement, revealing himself to be the manipulative mastermind behind their torment, David. The couple's worst fears are realized, as David coldly informs them that their show is far from over. In a chilling turn of events, David sets up a live camera feed, broadcasting their predicament to a twisted audience of online spectators. He sadistically commands Allie to dance, her fear and vulnerability on full display. Allie, paralyzed by terror, reluctantly complies, her every movement monitored and judged by the faceless viewers behind their screens. As David revels in the sickening attention and the approving comments flooding the chat, a sinister idea dawns on him. Time seems to slow as David takes aim at Jesse, unleashing a fatal shot. Jesse's lifeless body crumples to the floor, the weight of his loss pressing upon Allie's already fragile state of mind. Amidst the chaos and horror, the creature that has haunted Allie appears once more, its hideous visage contorted in a terrifying scream. In a desperate, primal response, poor Allie unleashes her own screams, a desperate plea for survival and sanity. The air thickens with fear and despair as Allie's cries mingle with the deafening silence that follows. The room is consumed by the chilling realization that escape seems increasingly distant, hope slipping away with each passing second. As David revels in his power and sadistic games, the odds are stacked against Allie and Chris, pushing them to the brink of desperation. In a heart-wrenching act of vengeance, Chris valiantly attempts to overpower David, driven by his love for Allie and the loss of his friend. However, David's superior strength and ruthless determination prove too much for Chris, and he falls victim to a brutal and untimely demise. Allie, forced to witness the harrowing scene unfold before her eyes, momentarily finds her screams silenced, as her worst fears become a devastating reality. Fueled by a surge of adrenaline and the instinct for survival, she musters every ounce of strength and flees from the scene, upon Chris's insistence. Seeking refuge in a nearby barn, Allie finds a momentary respite, catching her breath and collecting her thoughts. But the relentless pursuit of David, driven by his insidious desire to capture her every move, pushes her to the limits of her endurance. With a gunshot wound searing through her arm, Allie's determination intensifies, her fight-or-flight instincts kicking into high gear. As David closes in on her hiding place, his footsteps echoing through the stillness, Allie musters her courage and launches a surprise attack. She bravely smashes a crowbar into her attacker from behind, fueled by sheer survival instinct. As the man tries to struggle with the sudden attack, Allie seizes the opportunity to escape. Determined to outrun her pursuer, she jumps on the nearby motorbike and speeds away, adrenaline coursing through her veins. David, relentless in his pursuit, wrenches out the crowbar and chases after Allie on foot, his sniper rifle trained on her with deadly precision. In a moment of terror, he pulls the trigger, sending a bullet hurtling towards Allie. The impact sends her tumbling from the bike, her body crashing, but her spirit refuses to be broken. Summoning every ounce of strength, she rises from the dust and faces her tormentor head on. David rushes to the bike, still bleeding from the wound that Allie gave him. He starts the camera, and as he speaks, Allie gets up and manages to subdue David, her hands choking him, cutting off his oxygen supply. The once powerful predator is now powerless, his life slipping away as Allie exacts her long-awaited retribution. With David defeated and silenced forever, Allie takes a moment to catch her breath, the weight of her ordeal finally beginning to settle, and finally passes out. The movie ends with David getting his piled-up karma, because what goes around, comes around.